There are a few things that you need to know about sound wave. The very first thing is uh, the characteristic of sound wave eh, or the nature of sound wave. Eh? Natures of sound wave. Uh, first, you need to know that sound wave is formed by a series of compressions and uh, rarefactions. And if you still remember, okay, if you remember, waves that form by these uh, compressions and uh, rarefactions, a uh, series of compressions and rarefactions, is called a longitudinal wave uh, because the vibrations of the particles uh, is parallel to the directions of the motions of the wave. Uh. So therefore, it's longitudinal wave. So sound wave is a longitudinal wave and so this is illustrations of sound wave the dot shows the particles of the medium and then from here we can see that at this place okay there is a compression so where all the particles are compressed and at this place there are rarefactions where the particles are stretched in exam they may give you this illustration and then they want you to label where is the compression and where is the rarefactions? So you need to know where is the compressions and where is the rarefactions. That's the first things that you need to know. Now, another thing that you need to know about this illustration is the pressure, the pressure, okay, of these particles. And uh, you need to know that at which point the pressure is the highest. So uh, any idea which point the pressure is the highest, the compressions or the rarefactions? C. Okay, that's correct. For the compression, uh, the pressure is the highest. The pressure is the highest. And for rarefactions, the pressure is the lowest. Okay, the pressure is lowest. So that are the two things that may be asked in your test or exam. They ask you to label the compressions or the rarefactions. And then they ask you about the pressure. At which point the pressure is the higher and at which point the pressure is the lowest. Propagations of sound wave. Uh, sound wave is a mechanical wave. Mechanical wave is the wave that need a medium for its propagations. It must have a medium for its propagation. For example, the oceanic wave, the wave that you see at the seaside, okay, oceanic wave. For oceanic wave to form and to move, you must have water, right? If there's no water, you can't have oceanic wave. So, so therefore, oceanic wave is a mechanical wave. Okay, so you must have a medium for the wave to move, huh? and that's called a mechanical wave. Huh? And a sound wave is a mechanical wave. So we must have a medium. The medium can be either a solid or liquid or gas, huh? but uh, it must have a medium for the wave to move. Huh? or for the wave to propagate. Propagate is the motions of the wave. And therefore, sound wave cannot propagate in vacuum because vacuum is a space where there is no particles inside. So sound wave cannot propagate in vacuum. So that is what you need to know. So the medium for the propagations can be solid, liquids, or gas, as I told you just now. Sound wavers propagate fastest in solid and slowest in gas. Uh, that's another thing that you need to know. Uh, okay, the speed of the propagations of sound wave is fastest in solid and uh, slowest in gas. Types of sound wave. Uh, we classify uh, sound wave uh, into three groups according to the uh, the range of the frequency which can be heard or cannot be heard by human being. Human ear, normal, a uh, normal humans. Okay. Uh, a young person's like you, not like me, okay? Normal and young person's like you is capable of hearing sound with frequency of the range about this range, okay? Some persons can be higher or lower, okay? Uh, the range of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. The sound with frequency within this range is called the audio wave or the sonic wave. And uh, sound with frequency lower than 20 hertz, eh? Okay, now the things that you need to know is the speed of sound wave. So first, you need to know that the speed in solids is uh, greater than in liquids, and the speed in liquids is greater than in gases. Fastest in solids and slowest in gas. We discussed this just now. Second, you need to know that the speed of the sound is not affected by pressure. The speed of sound in air is not affected by pressure, but it's affected by temperature. 
So a lot of students are uh, surprised about this. Why is the speed of sound is uh, affected by the temperature? But that's not in the scope of the our discussions, okay? Uh, that's what you need to know. Uh. Speed of sound is not affected by pressure, but is affected by the temperature. It's affected by the air temperature. The higher the temperature, the higher the speed. So temperature increases, the speed will increase. Usually, uh, sound travels slowly or slower in a greater altitude. Greater altitude means it's at a higher place. Eh? Higher place like uh, Genting Highlands, Gunung Kinabaru, okay? So at a very high place, high altitudes, uh, the sound will travel slower. Okay, it will travel slower. So, uh, so sometimes the people think that uh, at high altitudes, the pressure is lower, right? The pressure is lower and the sound travels slower and therefore they think that uh, the speed of the sound is affected by pressure, but that's not true. That's not true, eh? okay? Um, so the speed of sound is affected by the temperature. That is because at high altitude like Genting Highlands or Kota Kinabaru or Gunung Tahan, uh, the temperature is lower. So when the temperature is lower, the sound will travel slower. Uh, actually, we discussed this uh, uh, when we discussed the refractions of sound wave, right? If you still remember, okay? When we discussed refractions of sound wave, actually, we did discuss this. Uh, uh, the case where uh, the, the sound of a distant train can be heard louder at night, okay? That is affected by the speed of the sound at different temperature. So this summarizes loudness and pitch, uh, okay? Uh, let's say this is a normal sound wave, okay? If the loudness increases, uh, then the amplitude increases. Uh, you compare this one with this one, uh, it has a higher amplitude. And uh, if the amplitude decreases, uh, okay, then the loudness decreases, okay? Uh, okay, I want you to do some corrections. In this diagram here, uh, cancel the increase uh, and write decrease. Write decrease here. This is decrease. Uh. Decrease, not increase, and this is increase. So if the pitch decrease, then from here we can see that the frequency decrease, eh? okay? And uh, if the pitch increase, then the, the frequency increase. Eh? It has more vibrations at the same periods. So this summarizes eh? what you need to know about the loudness and pitch.